Hello and welcome. Today we shall be looking at the common drugs that are used in general anesthesia. General anesthesia is a reversible state that is produced when a patient receives medications or drugs to produce amnesia and analgesia with or without muscle paralysis. This enables the patient to tolerate the surgical procedures that would otherwise inflict unbearable pain and unpleasant memories. General anesthesia has three stages, the induction stage, maintenance and reversal stage or emergency stage. In the induction stage, we use induction drugs, for example, propofol, thiopental and sevoflurane. Propofol is a barbiturate with an unknown mechanism of action. Propofol is also known as milk of amnesia. It is not to have a rapid induction and a return to consciousness and also has less likelihood of causing hangovers. Propofol has an onset set of action of less than 30 seconds and a duration of action of 5 to 10 minutes. It is commonly used with an opioid, for example fentanyl, to increase the chances of sedative effects and provide analgesia. The metabolism of propofol is by the liver and it has a rapid redistribution. Propofol is known to irritate intravenous site of administration and therefore you need to use a ladder vein and sometimes use lidocaine. It is also known to have antiemetic and amnestic properties at subhypnotic doses with anticonvulsant properties too. Propofol causes diminished airway reactivity, decreasing the incidence of coughing or laryngeal spasm in patients and 98% of it is bound to plasma proteins. The common side effects of propofol is hypotension. It lowers the blood pressure through a negative inotropic myocardial effects, vascular vasodilation and venous pooling which leads to reduced preload and reduced cardiac output hence a reduced blood pressure. The second drug that we use in induction is thiopental. Thiopental is a short-acting thiobabitrate classically used in rapid sequence intubation. It has an onset of action of less than 30 seconds and a duration of action of 5 to 10 minutes. It is also known to have anticonvulsant properties and causes non-immunologic histamine release causing hypertension but these non-immunologic histamine levels return to normal levels soon after administration. Thiopental is oxidatively metabolized by cytochrome P450 enzymes through an hepatic metabolism and it's known to cause postoperative nausea and vomiting, apnea and somnolence. The third drug that we use in induction is a gas known as sevoflurane. This is an inhalation anesthesia that is commonly used in pediatric patients. It has a minimum alveolar concentration of 1.1% and is the best induction agent because of uh, low airway irritation properties, sweet smelling and non-irritative. It is a potent bronchodilator. After induction, we need to use muscle laxants to allow us to intubate our patients and the muscle laxants that we use are classified to two classes, the depolarizing neuromuscular blockers and non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. Neuromuscular blockade is the interference with the nerve signal transmission at the neuromuscular junction resulting in skeletal muscle paralysis. These muscle laxants work by blocking the action of a neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine which initiates muscle contraction. The common non-depolarizing the common depolarizing neuromuscular blockers that we have are succinylcholine or succinylcholine and non-depolarizing agents are vecuronium, rocuronium and atracurium in a class of a number of drugs but they just these ones because they are the common ones used. Depolarizing muscle laxants. Depolarizing neuromuscular blockade drugs are agonists at the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and they work by mimicking the action of acetylcholine through binding the acetylcholine receptors and causing skeletal muscle contraction through depolarization of motor end plate. Like we say the common one we have is succamethonium or succinylcholine is the one that we use in rapid induction sequence. 
and it has a rapid onset of action of less than 30 seconds and it's not to be eliminated within 5 to 10 minutes. This drug is not broken down by acetylcholinesterase, instead it is metabolized by plasma butyryl cholinesterase. This enzyme is also known as pseudocholinesterase. The neurovascular blockage as a result of suxamethonium is prolonged with patients who have a plasma butyryl cholinesterase deficiencies and it's known to cause myalsias, hyperkalemia and dysrhythmias and also increased intraocular pressures and intracranial pressures. In non-depolarizing muscle laxants, we have rocuronium, vecuronium, atracurium and cisatracurium, which are intermediate acting non-depolarizing muscle laxants and one of the long acting non-depolarizing muscle laxants we have is pancuronium. Atracurium can cause bronchospasms and it causes histamine release and hypotension when administered rapidly. It is broken down within blood and is a and is a drug of choice in renal impairment. Rocuronium onset of action is related to its dose of administration and uh, vecuronium is used both in intubation and surgical muscle relaxation. Vecuronium also is known to have little, little cardiovascular effects and last place is a tracurium elimination is not affected by renal or hepatic diseases therefore can be used in patients with hepatic uh, or renal insufficiency. The next step is maintenance of anesthesia. Maintenance of anesthesia can be done through gases or intravenous anesthetics and the common gases that we use are desflurane, isoflurane and sevoflurane while the intravenous uh, anesthesia, intravenous anesthesia that we use in maintenance of anesthesia is for infusion. Before we move any further, let's look at what is the minimum alveolar concentration or the mark of an inhaled anesthesia. The minimum alveolar concentration of an inhaled anesthetic is the concentration at normal atmospheric pressure 1 that prevents visible skeletal muscle movements in response to a surgical incision in 50% of patients. And in this case, desflurane is known to have a minimum alveolar concentration of 6%, isoflurane has a mark of 1.17% and sevoflurane has a mark of 2%. Desflurane is associated with an increased recovery and these are kind of uh, inhalational anesthesia which is quite a unique property because it boils at 22.8 degrees celsius which is kind of near normal room temperatures. Therefore, it requires a unique vaporizer that heats the liquid to 39 degrees Celsius to vaporize it to be administered. Then isoflurane on the other end is quite cheaper, moderately pungent. And lastly, sevoflurane is one of the best maintenance anesthetic agents because it uh, has low airway irritation, is a potent bronchodilator. During the surgical procedure or during maintenance of anesthesia, we may need some emergency drugs in to be around to be used for example anticholinergics or parasympathetic agents for example atropine and glycopyrrolate which is used to correct bradycardias, alpha agonists such as phenylephedrine, phenyledrine and metraminol that we use in case of uh, tachycardias and Alpha and beta agonists like ephedrine, beta antagonists, for example, abitolor and esmolar to be used to counteract high blood pressures, alpha 2 agonists such as clonidine and analgesia and opiate drugs. Then the last stage of anesthesia is reversal of anesthesia. The emergence from anesthesia of a very long duration is the inverse of anesthesia induction. But to note is that uh, with succinylcholine or succinylcholine, we do not reverse it with an antagonist. Instead, we unwearingly ventilate the patient's lungs and the block has worn off by itself. And in cases of non-polarizing muscle blockage, we reverse it using neostigmine, administered together with atropine or glycopyrrolate. 
because neostigmine with an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor can cause bradycardias we give atropine or glycopyrrhate to prevent these unwanted autonomic effects of uh, these neostigmine for example excessive salivation bradycardias and intestinal cramping and then postoperatively we need to give some of the antiemetic drugs such as metoclopramide undecetron cyclozine and dexamethasone though dexamethasone is a commonly used steroid it has antiemetic properties therefore we can give it either in preoperative medications prophylactically or we can use it postoperatively and then in the management of pain we use opiates and non opiates too in the opiate area we use in opiates we use morphine fentanyl ramifentanyl codeine tramadol meperidine and pethidine though we both us to note is that fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine and we can opt to use non opiates too for example paracetamol or acetaminophen in infusion ketololac or diclofenac